welcome to today's video. I'm gonna paint another mushroom to take into the gallery uh, for my collection. So I thought I'd show you how I do it. So you will need some paper or I'm just gonna do it in my sketchbook. I'd recommend watercolor paper or some thicker paper to start with. I've got some different paint brushes. So I've got a bigger one, some medium ones and then a smaller fine detail one. A palette or I'm just using a plate this is just a normal kitchen plate actually using something that's not plastic so porcelain plate works really well I find it's better for soaking up the paint into the paint brushes I've just got some fresh water in my mermaids have more fun mug I've got my tubes of watercolor paint you can use watercolors just from a palette the already dried ones but for this one I'm just using the tubes of watercolor just got a regular pencil to sketch out the outline, a fine liner to go over some details after the painting is dried. Um, this one's just from Uniball, but you can just use any kind of fine liner. And then some scrunched up tissue because we're going to dab it on when the paint is still wet to create some texture. So out of this set, this is just a basic set of watercolours, but out of this set I'm going to use the brighter red. Also the darker red, crimson red, we want the white, we also want some of this, it's a yellow ochre and then maybe some green for the grass, we can mix with that, um, what else, let's go with a bit of blue. So we want this ultramarine or a darker blue just to add some darker tones. And maybe if we want to even darken the tones some more, maybe some black just in case. So I'm just going to start by sketching out the outline of my mushroom in the centre of the page. Um, just using really light sketchy marks so then when you paint over it they don't show too much through the paint. Um, I think I can pretty much remember <laughs> the shape and the outline of the mushrooms now, but if you are struggling, then you're more than welcome to use this image as a base, or you could just Google a toadstool um, or a mushroom and kind of get the outline from a photo that you find. That's kind of an easy way to start off. Just as a quick note, I actually do have a mushroom coloring page. So if you didn't feel confident enough to sketch out and draw your outline of your mushroom, um, I'll just link down below where you can get my mushroom coloring page. Then you can print that out and then just paint on top of that or colour on top of that. Um, I think if you use cartridge paper in your home printer that should do fine. It's still thin enough to go through the printer and print fine but thick enough to handle some of the water and the paint as well. So um, yeah just double check and see if it'll go through there. Some printers will actually take watercolour paper as well like my old printer I could print stuff on watercolour paper, but my new one, not so much. You might just have to fiddle with the settings of the printer a bit. But yeah, I just thought I'd pop on and say that's an option if you didn't want to sketch out your mushroom. So first thing I'm going to do is just get my bigger watercolour brush and just dip it in the water. And we kind of want to make the surface nice and wet for putting the paint on so just dab where we want the color to go so we're going to start with the top of the mushroom so i'm just gonna keep within the lines of my sketch just there we go You want it to have a nice wet sheen on the top of the paper. Great, then we're gonna get some water and start with the lighter red color and make it quite translucent, quite a bit of water and just go in with the color onto our space. 
you can see it's spreading out and it kind of just travels with the water that we've already put on the page this is exactly what we want it to do i just want to add a nice base color to start with great so once that's in we can go in and kind of get a bit of a thicker red paint so just add some more paint into where you started mixing so it's a bit thicker and you can kind of just drop bits on to the page to build up the thickness you can always go in and add a bit more water if you kind of get a droplet on your brush and just kind of dab it in the middle dab it onto the already wet page it'll start spreading out with the other water and that can cause quite a nice effect when it dries you can see it all spreading which is really cool so we want to focus mostly on the outer edges because I'll show you in the minute I'm um, we're gonna dab the middle so with our scrunched up bit of tissue just want to dab some of the color away in the middle to create a highlight now in a minute when we add the darker tones it will kind of contrast and make it look a bit more 3d and interesting lovely so i might go in with my medium paintbrush now and add some like thicker splodges it doesn't have to be perfect or precise the good thing with watercolor is when it bleeds it actually looks quite nice and gives a good effect so I did a watercolour workshop with Tori Ratcliffe Art where she showed us how she paints mushrooms. I'll link her down below as she's one of my favourite artists and I've loved her for ages. Um, but since then I've been obsessed with painting and drawing them so I thought I'd share how I've adapted what I learned in her workshop to suit me and my style. So keep going until you get the effect that you want. Okay, now I'm going to grab a bit of the darker red colour. Kind of get a medium consistency. And start putting it on the outside edges. You can even add a bit of the other red in as well if you want. Kind of mix them both together. You can go in and add darker splodges within the mushroom as well if you want to. Give it a bit of a contrast to the other red. What I'm also going to do is just take a little bit of the black and some of this red and mix it. Create an even darker tone and just take that on some of the edges. Doesn't have to be all of it, just wherever you think. Kind of blend it in a bit.
Great, and now we just wait for that bit to dry before moving on to the next bit. So now that our top of the mushroom is nearly dry, I'm just gonna come into the stalk and add some water like we did for the top. Okay, so now I want to mix a lot of the white, tiny bit of the yellow, and water. to give us a nice off-white colour for the stalk. Maybe add in the slightest touch of blue. Oh, a bit too much blue. Too much blue. Mm. Now it's like a nice grainy mushroom colour. Sometimes it can be a bit trial and error for how much you need to mix. I kind of want you somewhere in between these two, really. There we go. Lovely. Just add a layer of that on to our stalk. Add a bit more water if it's not going on how you want it. So you might see these little bits, these are sometimes um, bits of the paper that if you really work it, some of the paper comes up. Like for me, I'm only using a sketchbook, so with the thinner paper that's quite common, but don't worry about it. I quite like it, sometimes it gives texture to your painting as well. I'm just going to add in some like drops of water so to see if the paint spreads out a bit and make, do some cool effects. And then I'm just going to get um, a bit of a darker colour, maybe add a little bit more yellow or you can go more blue, whatever way you want to make it a bit darker just to add a different tone into the piece and I'm just going to kind of dab it under that line there to create a bit of a shadow. You can kind of drag it down a bit, blend it down if you want to. Maybe the same up here under this one. So in my one, I'm imagining the light, it's more light over this side, which is why I'm kind of putting the shadows down this side of the painting. I'm 
I've got a bit more of the bluer tones. Just kind of adding in a bit of colour variation and some different textures. Now this bluer tone that I've created, I'm going to use for the underside of the mushroom where the gills are. So I'm just going to paint that in. This time I haven't put a water layer down first, I'm just kind of going straight in because it's such a small area and I want it to be quite precise without the water spilling over so you don't always have to put a water layer down first for watercolour you can just paint straight onto the page if you want it to be more more precise and definitely within the lines so you can see it's kind of spilling over a bit anyway There we go, and I'm just going to wait for that to dry to go in and do some more details. Might just make a slightly darker grey with like a tiny bit of black, some of the blue, some of the bluey tone we already had, and some of the lighter yellow to make this darker grey and really come in underneath and make a bit more of a shadow. I'm going to change to my smaller paintbrush actually and just wet it and kind of blend. I'm just mixing a bit of the darker red and the black together. I kind of want to highlight these edges a bit. That's quite thick. If you've got too much on your brush, just wash it off. It doesn't really matter. I just want to come in and darken these edges a tiny bit. You can kind of just get some water in your paintbrush and blend it so it's not such a harsh edge. Just gives it a bit more contrast, really. If some of the paint runs where you don't want it to, you can just grab a dry brush and kind of scoop it back down. But yeah, just make sure the paintbrush is dry when you do it. I quite like the mark it's left, actually. I like the texture. Now it's dried a bit, I'm going to go back in with that ready black brown colour that I made. just want to create more shadow under this paint. And maybe a bit more water on the brush to kind of blend, blend it a bit more. There we go. 
The darker colours just give that illusion of depth. And when you compare them to the lighter colours, it's quite a lot of contrast, so it makes it look more 3D, really. Just go in and add some darker bits around here. You can carry on mixing different shades of red, just adding them back in where you think it would be nice to add a bit of definition. Because once it starts drying you can kind of see what the finished product is going to look like a bit more and where you need to go back in and add some details or just blend stuff a bit more. You don't have to get it perfect on the first try because with watercolours as long as you've got some water on your brush you can go back in and, and blend and adjust things. Great, I'm pretty happy with that so far. Now I went and got an even thinner, smaller paintbrush Although I don't know actually, maybe they're about the same. I'll give them a go. But I wanted to get a really thin line to draw the gills. So I want some of the bluey grey darker colour that we made. If you just rub a bit of water on it, it should bring it back to life on the palette a little bit. enough there so with the gills you kind of want to make diagonal lines coming away from the center of the mushroom so just a bit like this you don't have to be perfect or all the same length or anything it probably looks a bit better if you do them all a bit different anyway So I've done those that way and then with this side we want to go the opposite way. So while that's drying we can move on and make some grass underneath the mushroom. So for this I'm just going to grab my medium brush again um, and get some green and mix it with a bit of the yellow ochre to give more of a grassy colour because sometimes the greens you get straight out of the tubes aren't, aren't particularly great or more natural so this is quite nice to give it more of that grass colour. Um, so there are a couple ways you can create the illusion of grass I guess. So. The first one, you can kind of just make a messy blob. And again, you can add darker bits to it, um, maybe down the bottom. Add some darker bits, blend it. And then even come back in with your tissue and kind of create some highlights. We'll get our thinner brush and get a good lot of colour on there. And then just kind of drag it up do some little flicky motions through the blob. To create some grass. And that's like a, a messier way to do it. Or you could just do the, the lines if you wanted to. Um, 
yeah, just get some paint again on a thinner brush and just do some like messy lines all around. Uh, it would be good to change up the colour a little bit so you can add more yellows or more darker greens into it so it gives a few different green tones. Just looks quite nice. I'm going to add some of that into this one, I think, as well. Looks quite nice, the more yellow against the bluier green. So yeah, it depends what style you want it to go for, really. Okay, now the top of our mushroom is nearly dry, we want to go in and add the little white spots onto it. So you can either do this with just some more like thicker white paint. Um, we can use our white watercolour um, without much water on it or if you've got gouache or acrylic paint that would work as well because um, we want it to be quite bold over the top of the red. Um, or if you're just using the palette watercolours um, and you don't have tubes of paint, you could always use a white gel pen. Um, I use white gel pens a lot to do highlights in my work, so they work quite well and you can be quite precise with drawing them. Um, but as I've got my white paint tube out already, I'm just going to use that. So, just get a nice blob. And then, yeah, just wherever you fancy. It doesn't matter, it can be completely random. Doesn't matter if it's like too blobby or flat because that will give different textures. You can even have some like coming off of the mushroom because we can always go and add in some fine liner pen around it afterwards to make it more noticeable when it goes off the mushroom. So once you have your white spots, you can get your fine liner and then we can just give them a little bit of an outline and then we can see the ones that are on the edge of the mushroom as well and then if you wanted to add any definition to the gills maybe under the mushroom just like a few little flicks and if you want to define any of the edges a bit more then the fine line is quite a good way to do that as well and I might add some like little lines of definition like that um, if you want to make more of your pencil lines and you're quite bothered about them and you want them to be more of the piece then by all means you can kind of outline everything in the in the fire liner to make it more of that kind of style but um yeah for this one i think i'm just going to kind of highlight bits this bit's kind of bled so let me get tissue any bit that you're not happy with you can either just get a dry a dry brush or a tissue and kind of just scoop it back down a bit more defined go in and amend any little details that you like I'll just blend this one down a little bit more
The good thing with watercolour is you can just keep working it as long as you wet it. So to finish off the piece I'm going to get my big brush again and mix a thin green to create some splatters to fill the background. Um, if you've seen my work you'll know this is the style I like to go for. So here's the finished piece. I really hope you guys enjoyed painting along with me, it was really fun and if you have any suggestions of what you want to see me paint next then please comment down below um, I'd be happy to paint anything that you want me to paint and I can show you how I do that as well um, if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more of this content so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video